Hi everybody and welcome to part two of Luck of the Gnome. This is the bench pillow. Um, we're going to continue on with some blocks uh, in this video. We're going to be doing the shamrock blocks and there's two of them. So this is different. So up here it says to make two blocks. So we're going to make, I'm only going to do one on camera because they're exactly the same. So we'll just do one and then you can make the second one. So this one does require two blocks for the shamrock. So we'll do that one. And then we're going to do the rainbow block. And then the next one would be the rainbow cauldron box. So these, these two blocks kind of go together. And then, um, let's see, there's a rainbow block and a rainbow cauldron. So I think there's just, a, yeah, just a rainbow block and a rainbow cauldron block. Okay. And then the last blocks we're going to do are going to be the letter blocks. And there's five of them, but they're done the same way. They're just different letters. So, you know, we're going to spell out the word lucky. So you do, I'm just going to do one on, on screen and then you can do the other blocks, but we'll do the first one. Probably I haven't decided what color I'm going to do those yet in. Um, but then I'll just do one on screen and they're all done the same way. They're going to be quilted the same way. And then you just bring in a different, um, cut a uh, different letter and do the five letters. Okay. So that's going to be in this video. And then we're going to move on to the little gnomes. Okay. So let me get to my rainbow. We're, we're going to do the, we're going to do the shamrock block first. Okay. So <clears throat> the shamrock block is a four, let's see, I'm going to look and see square finished block to four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So in other words, we're going to use a quilting design that's four by four because that's the finished size. I'm going to go ahead and use my plaid and my plaid one and I haven't written this all in here yet. So I guess I'll just kind of write it and I'm going to use my four by four quilting block, quilting pattern, and then I'm going to use a five by seven hoop. So I'll just write these in as I'm going and uh, we'll use the five by seven hoop and then um, the both of them are the same. So it looks like I'm going to quilt it with the white, I'm going to continue quilting with white. And then it looks like the, um, they might do the placement lines and then the leather lines with the black. So I'll use black thread here. Okay. So let's go ahead and get those. You're going to have two pieces of the fabric with the little, um, this is, I've got the kind with the plaid on it. And then just so you know, I have put the, um, the shape flex on the back. So I've got the SF 101 shape flex on the back of each of these. And then the other pieces are actually going to be the embroidery leather. So it's kind of that light green embroidery leather. Okay. So let's go ahead and find our design in the patterns here. So I'm going to move the camera here. All right. So we're going to go into embroidery. The first thing we're going to get then is our quilting design. So I'm going to go to my stick and then I'm going to go to my quilting and I'm going to go to plaid one. I've been doing all the applique ones in the plaid. Again, if whatever designs you have from Kimberbell, you can use. I just like, I just picked three. I picked a border and two standard ones. So there weren't too many in the pillow and it's going to look just beautiful. Okay. So plaid, let's see, P L A I, I have to see if I, I can, there we go. Plaid one. Okay. And then we're going to find the embroidery files and we're going to find the, so this is going to square up four and a half by four and a half. So the finished size would be four by four. So we're going to go find the four by four plaid right here. And I'm going to set that. And then we're going to bring in the four by four shamrock. So I'm going to hit add down here. Let's go back to my stick. And let's see here. Where is it? It's right here. Luck of the gnome. And we're going to bring in the shamrock and you're going to make them both the same. So here's the shamrock right here, four by four. So I'm going to bring that one in. And now this is going to be raw edge applique. And it also, I'm looking at the instructions. There's no specialty um, trimming instructions. So we're not going to have to move. These are just going to be centered. So we don't have to do anything special to the design to bring it into a, a different place. So it's all going to be in here. Now it says that the um, embroidery leather, it's going to be um, raw edge. So we're going to trim the embroidery at, 
um, leather close to the stitches. And they did use the black thread on it. And I think it looks kind of neat because it looks like an outline then. And then um, we're going to do two of those. So, okay, so I think we got it all set up the way we need it. So there is the first one. I've got my five by seven hoop in my machine. Let me get my, get this turned over here. I've got that my five by seven hoop in the machine and I have my um, no show mesh in the hoop already. Got my white um, or embroidery thread in the needle and I also have bobbin, my pre-wound bobbin, just plain pre-wound bobbin in my bobbin, okay? And I'm using a number 11 needle. I hardly ever embroider with anything but a number 11 needle. So that's what I've got in my machine. And the first step, I'm going to set this and hit embroidery. And I'm going, the first step is all, as always, with the quilting in here, is going to be the placement line for our batting. So we'll put this in and get this ready to do the quilting. It's nice to be able to use a little smaller hoop for some of these because some of the um, designs have been, are going to be a little larger, so we have to use a larger hoop, but it's been nice. Sorry, my cat, my cat has decided to come out and talk to me, so you may hear cat noises going on. She has been a little, she's being very strange right now. I don't know if she, I think she sees a bug. I think I've got a bug in here and she's chasing it around. All right, so we're going to put our batting down, and we're gonna, step number two then is going to be the place the tack down line for the batting. I think everybody's getting used to the rhythm of these little quilting designs. They're pretty easy. And this this pillow has quite a few blocks in it, but it but they're all smaller. I've noticed that you know they're not taking as long as some of them do. So this one's not too bad. These are only like, well, this is this block says it takes um, four minutes. <laughs> I think it's going to take a little longer than that, but. Okay, so then we're going to trim this. Uh-oh, now she's up behind me. So you may be hearing cat sounds. I apologize if you hear a bunch of funny cat sounds. She likes my, um, my 10 needle that's behind me, and she likes to crawl in behind it. So that's where she's at right now. All right. So there's the batting trimmed. And now we're going to do the third step is always the placement line then for the fabric. So I'm going to get my fabric ready. And again, I do have my, oops, I don't think my, my, my machine decided not to catch. So we're going to back it up. I'm going to hit the negative positive needle on my machine and we're going to back this up a second here. So every now and then it doesn't like to sew sometimes on just stabilizer. It doesn't catch very well sometimes. It's just because there's no nothing in there but stabilizer. So don't panic if your machine does that occasionally. With, it especially does that with tearaway. This is a little bit better but the tearaway stabilizer it does it all the time. Okay, so then we're going to lay our piece of background fabric with the shape flex on the back. We're going to lay this down over the batting and get it as centered as I can. And then step number four is always going to be then that tack down line for the fabric. So we're going to tack down the fabric. And then step number five will be the quilting. And this is going to be that plaid design again. The plaid on the plaid ought to look interesting. So I could have put a different one, but I'm just kind of sticking with my little plan I had. So I think it'll be just fine. Actually, the plaid looks a lot like this plaid. So, <laughs> all right. So now we're going to stitch the quilting on here. And then we'll move on to the shamrock applique. All right. So off it goes. And, and actually, the plaid's a lot like the plaid in the, pa in the fabric, so I think it's going to look really nice. And this is, then we're going to move on to the applique, applique with the embroidery leather. We're going to see if I can find my black thread here. This goes pretty quick.
I have a feeling I'm about to get pounced on, so I, again, I apologize if you see an orange cat come flying up to me here. But, I know. She's, she, I did, I did feed her, so she cannot tell me I didn't feed her. I think now we want T-R-E-A-T-S's. That's what she really wants now. So I may have to get up and do that so she won't bother me. Otherwise, she'll be up here bothering me the whole time. We have to have, you know, T-R-E-A-T-S's. If I say it, then I have to get up right now. So she likes those right after we eat. And she always lets me know it. See, I'm not in the kitchen. I'm in out here not paying attention to what's going on. So, okay. So the next step then, we're into the actual applique for the um, shamrock. And they actually just used black thread for the placement and the tack down. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the black thread in. And then do my placement line so I know where to put down my piece of, and this is the embroidery leather, the green embroidery leather. Hopefully you can see that, okay? And then get my embroidery leather out here. And this is just going to be raw edge applique, so it'll just give us our placement line, and then we're going to lay this down, and then it's going to do like a triple stitch to sew it down. And then we'll trim it. Okay, so let's get this on here. This will be pretty. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hold it on there. This is going to scoot just a little, so I think I'm going to kind of hold it down. I'm going to leave my black thread in. And it's going to tack it down. Just let get it started, and then it should be okay. There we go. And then we're going to trim this. This one kind of wanted to roll up, so I'm going to kind of hold it down a little bit. It's been, it's kind of rolling a little. It was in the package quite a while, because like I told you yesterday, when I was making the first video, video it was just yesterday, I, uh, I've had this for quite some time, and the leathers and stuff have been in the package for quite a while. So they, they're a little curly. All right. Just doing a triple stitch. It's going to come down and do the little stem. And this is the last step. And then you have to make a second one. So we're going to trim this. I'm going to show you how to trim it. And then we're going to do the second one. I'll do the second one off camera, and then I'll come back and we'll do the next block. All right, so we're going to trim this. Okay, so that's all the stitching we're going to do. I'm going to get my glasses on here. Now these... This leather generally has a white backing. Not all of them do, but this one does. So I don't want the backing to really show. So I'm going to try to tip my scissors so that they're kind of parallel. And that way you don't see too much of the white. So the more you tip them like this, the more of an angle you're going to get when you're, when you're, when you're cutting. And I want it to be pretty much straight up and down. So I'm going to try to do the best I can here. Sometimes I struggle a little bit with this, but we want it to be pretty much straight up and down. And I've tried some other scissors. The other scissors I, I that will work pretty well are the um, micro tip scissors, but I have a little more trouble with those because they're not as the blades are so short. So I find that my double curves still work real well, but I have to kind of tip them towards me and keep them, keep them tipped so that they don't give me that white, that white beveled line on the edge. So I don't like that line on there. So I'm just kind of keeping them up and trimming maybe about an eighth of an inch away. So you can leave just a little bit of a edge after around the black. I kind of like the black in there. It kind of goes nicely with the, um, with the background. Okay, so let's see if we can get this one. It's a little hard when you have all these little curves here. All right. and again, like I said, we're going to make a second one of these. So I'll make the second one off camera because I think you can do it once you've seen it once. I think you can do it with me. And 
keep trying to keep my scissors tipped. Okay, get down in that little spot. Oops, I got a little weirdo spot here, so let's see if I can fix that. There we go. With this, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. It's a little hard. I'm trying to, to trim in the camera so you can see. Okay, so I'm keeping my scissors tipped toward me. And if you have another pair of scissors that the, that works well for you, by all means use those. This is just the scissors I use most of the time. And I find that these, especially, they have a really, really thin little tip on them. And the other ones that do work for me are those micro tips. And um, I do use those sometimes, but they're straight scissors. They're not curved like these are. And so I find them a little hard sometimes to get down. And, you know, there's a little bit of a... Um, a drop in the hoop, you know, because there's a little ledge around the hoop. And I find it a little difficult sometimes to get down in there with those straight scissors. So these curved ones work better for me. And they're a longer scissor, you know, they're, they're six or, you know, six or seven inches long. And, and the other ones are only maybe three. And so it's just hard. I think it's just harder because they're so short. All right. So these are looking pretty good. Trying to keep, you know, keep my scissors tipped up so that I don't get that white. Otherwise, you can get it kind of a white. Like if I do it over here and I go like this, you'll see then, then when you see the edge, you see the white edge on the edge of it right there. And, it, and, it, and it's quite noticeable when you look at the project. So I'm trying to do the best I can to keep that from showing. Now, this is not a real dark leather some of the leathers that have the white background are it's very noticeable like the blue is quite noticeable because it's so it's so much darker this is pretty light so this one's not too bad if you see a little bit of the white okay so i got that i got with this one more little spot in here to do though Let's see if i can get this one i'm gonna to have to kind of tip this other way to get this there that one I got just a little bit of a ledge, but I just can't get my scissors in there very well. There, that looks pretty good. Did I hope oh, I got a little got a little notch over here? So let's see if we can get this one smoothed off just a little. There. Okay. So what do you think of my shamrock? That's really pretty. I like that. Pull this back a little bit so you can see. What do you think? I like that. All right. So I'm going to make a second one of these. Okay, and then I'll show you how to trim them. So I'll go ahead and make my second one and trim it, and then I'll show you how to how to um, do the trimming on or to trim the outline, you know, with the orange pop rulers for both of them. Okay, so I got my second shamrock done. So here's my my two shamrocks. Aren't those cute with the plaid and the and the black outline? I really like those. Very shiny. Okay. So now it says that we need to square them up to four and a half by four and a half. So I've got my orange pop rulers here and I've got my four and a half inch one. And then I like to put the, the bigger one in too, just to help me. So I'm going to take this and of course, you know, we've got our, our fabric placement or our fabric tack down lines in there to help us get this lined up. It's very nice to have those lines because then it really helps you get it lined up. So we can get it pretty much centered. And then I'm going to put my larger ruler in also, and I'm going to turn it towards me. Now remember, I'm I'm left-handed, so I'm cutting with my left hand, and I'm I've got this turned to the right. So if you're right a righty, you're going to go to the left. Okay, I'm going to cut. I'm going to start in a little ways, pull back into the corner, and push forward. Spin on my Martelli wet mat. I love this mat. Okay, makes and these really spin. You know, you don't have trouble with them spinning. Some of the other types of mats don't spin very well. They catch. The only reason mine's catching just slightly right now is because it's hitting my little fan over here. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have a whole lot of room to, to uh, move over here. So Okay, so there's my first one. There's my shamrock. Isn't that pretty? I like that. Let's get the other one. We're going to do the other one the same way. Move my little fan over just a little bit so it doesn't hit my mat. Then we're going to get this lined up. Got to find the top of it. There we go. And I'm going to line up using those, those tack down lines for my fabric to help me kind of get it squared up. It looks pretty good. Put the bigger one in. This is the six and a half by six and a half inch one. OK, 
Okay, and do the same thing. Start in, pull back into the corner and push forward. Make sure you have a good sharp rotary blade when you're doing this, it helps a lot. You're cutting through, you know, several layers with the fabric and, and the stabilizer is kind of stiff sometimes, so that I always need to make sure I put a good blade in my rotary cutter. So did I get this one? Yeah, I think I got them all. Goodness, that was that went fast, didn't it? Okay. Oops, I got one little spot that didn't trim here. I think it's just about time for another blade. I'm notice I notice it when I cut these because you really want it to be sharp. There we go. There. Okay, so there's my second shamrock. Isn't that pretty with the with the uh, embroidery leather? I really like the embroidery leather. All right. So that are those are the two shamrocks, and of course, don't forget to make both of them. The two shamrock. Um, blocks those are four and a half by four and a half and then we're going to move on to the next block which is going to be the rainbow block now originally when I saw the instructions I thought this one and the cauldron went together but they're actually separate blocks so now I understand I was I was misreading the directions so this block is also going to be um, a four and a half by four and a half inch block so I can still use my five by seven hoop so we'll go ahead and we'll get this one and I think this one up here says specialty cutting instructions so we're going to have to do some moving of the design to get it into the right position in the in the hoop so i'm going to get set up for this block and i'll be right back okay so we're ready for the rainbow block now this one says it has specialty cutting instructions so when we go to put our design in we want to look at those instructions at the bottom to see where we're going to be placing the rainbow in the hoop in comparison to our quilting design so i'm going to go ahead and start and get my quilting design and then i'll show you what we're going to do with the rainbows so okay so let's get the, and i'm going to go back to the um plaid one i'm just using the plaid for these applique blocks and then there'll be a whole bunch of blocks that'll have another design in them okay so let's see the camera bell whoops got the wrong folder again Kimber Bell quilting. There we go. So let's bring in plaid one. And like I said in the last video, if, if there's other designs that you want to use, by all means, just use whatever you have. I just picked three so that if you didn't have any, you wouldn't have to buy too many. So I was trying to keep the cost way down. So, all right, so here's plaid four by four. So this one's going to be it says trim it by four and a half by four and a half, but we're going to trim, we're going to use a finished block of four by four. So I'm going to set that one, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring up my rainbow. So I'm going to hit add down here. Sorry, couldn't see it. It was right here. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to my stick. And we're going to go to Luck of the Gnome, and we're going to go find our rainbow. So here's the four by four rainbow. Okay, so this one says in the specialty instructions, it says that um, the, I don't know if you can see it very well in here, I'll try to hold it up so you can see it, but right here we want the edge of the rainbow to be a quarter of an inch, so in other words, it's going to be just in the seam line, okay? So let's look on here, I'm going to bring this bigger on the screen so we can look at it. And we want to make sure that it is to the right. Uh, we want it to be a quarter of an inch from the edge on the right and on the bottom. That's the way they want you to do it. So let's see here. I'm going to set this. I'm going to hit edit up here. And let me see. What is a good way to tell if you're a quarter of an inch up? Let me see. So if we go over here, so see, this is all the way over. What That is on the edge. So I think the line, that's going to be roughly a quarter of an inch. Can you see this little line right here, like right inside the plaid there? That is the placement lines for the batting. And that is the line we want to be on on the right. And if you can see it at the bottom, if I move this up a little bit, you can see it. See it down here at the bottom as well. Those are the placement lines for the batting. So that's going to be a quarter of an inch away from the other line that's there. And that's the tack down 
and our placement and tack down for the fabric. So we want to get it over to the inside straight line. So that's a quarter of an inch in. And I'm whoops, going to bring it down to the other line here. I think we need to be about right there. And it looks like I might need to go over just a smidgen so that we're lining up the line of the rainbow with the inside line of the block. There are, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at it real close on your own machine. It may not be very obvious here, but we're, I'm, I'm choosing the placement and tack down line of the batting, which is the first line, and that's where we want the, in, the edge of our rainbow, the bottom left edge and the top right edge to be. So I'm seeing if that looks pretty good. If I bring it up, then I can see it. It's kind of an orange line on my screen. So I think that's pretty good. Okay. So when we trim this, then it's going to be about a quarter of an inch. The edge of it's going to be a quarter of an inch on the right and a quarter of an inch down at the bottom so that when we go to trim it, uh, when we go to sew it together, that the edge of the the, the bottom of the rainbow is going to be basically in the seam and the side of the rainbow. Okay, so I've just got it lined up. So the line I lined it up in this right hand corner, bottom right hand corner, is the line that is for the batting. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and embroidery. So we're going to start out again with the um, with the quilting, of course. This is my pieces for this particular. So we're going to do something different with this one. So give me a second. I'm going to move this over here. This is my background fabric again with my with my shape flex on the back. This kind of pretty gray with the little lines in it. And then um, we're going to be doing using some mylar in this. So this is the iridescent mylar that came in the embellishment kit. So I'm going to set that aside. We won't need that for a few minutes because we're going to do the quilting first. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got my white thread in my needle again. I've got my regular embroidery thread, bobbin thread in the bobbin. And I've got my no-show mesh in my 5x7 hoop. So we're going to start the quilting process here again, just like we have for the other blocks. First step is going to be the placement line for the batting. So this is the line that I was lining up my rainbow to. So it's smaller than the other line. So it might be a little bit, you might understand better if you see it again stitched out because there's going to be a line that's going to be a quarter of an inch bigger. So this is the line I met, I lined up my rainbow up here and down here on, okay? Then we're going to put our batting in here. Let's see if I've got a big enough piece here yet. Just barely. <laughs> I think it'll work. Got some little, little chunks. We're doing some smaller blocks right now, so I can use some of these small chunks up. Originally, when I saw the instructions, I thought that these two, this one and the cauldron went together, but it's actually two separate blocks. There's two rainbows in it, one with the cauldron on the bottom and one with just the rainbow. So I wasn't paying, paying, paying close attention when I read it the first time. All right, so then we're going to trim our batting, of course. So we get our batting trimmed here to the stitches maybe has to do its little shimmy at the end there get this trimmed I might it's Sunday and I'm I may have to take a nap golly I'm just all of a sudden I just got really sleepy so I'm trying to <laughs> trying to stay awake everybody I hopefully Hopefully I'll stay awake for this. I don't know why I'm so sleepy. So now, now we're going to do the, the placement line for the fabric. So that's step number three. I'm looking to see what else. Oh, I, I better get my tape. We're going to need some Kimberbell tape for this one. Um, that mylar is a little bit on the scoochy side, so I always tape mylar. I'm not a big taper, but I always tape the mylar down because it likes to scoot all over the place. Okay, so I got my fabric with my shape flex on the back. And I'm going to put over my placement line here. Try to get it as centered as I can. I think it needs to come up this way a little bit. There we go. All right. And then 
Step number four is going to be the tack down. It's going to tack down our fabric. And I'm just going to do, like I said, I think I'm just going to do all my quilting in white. There's a few darker colored blocks, but most of them were light. And I just thought it's just easier to do it all in one color. <laughs> Sometimes I've tried doing multiple colors and it, it just gets too confusing to me. So I just do them all in one color. Okay, so now step number five is going to be the plaid quilting. And then we're going to be ready to do the um, rainbow. This is going to be, I think this is going to turn out really pretty. I like, I like um, mylar. And they don't do, they used to do tons of mylar. So this is a little older design. And they kind of, they don't do as much mylar now. I, I love mylar. It's so pretty. Their mylar is very good. So if you're buying mylar, their buy mylar is really good. And you can actually wash it if you need to launder it. It's okay. Um, some mylars that are less expensive or like they're not really made for embroidery. Like this is made for, for using with fabrics and they um, wash better. So if you need to wash like a shirt or something that you put mylar on, you can. We're going to have another little plaid block. I kind of like the plaid, actually. But the other ones that are going to be, a lot of the other blocks are going to be like um, the shamrocks. So those will be really pretty together. And you'll see the shamrocks more. To the plaid, so many of these are going to be kind of covered up. So you won't really see it too much. Okay. So when I'm looking at my color chart over here, it says to put the mylar down with the, there's kind of a light blue. And um, it's called Misty Blue, and this was 0287. So I'm going to change to my Misty Blue, and that's also going to be the first color of the rainbow. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Misty Blue in. We're already on the third block. Wow, we're doing great. These are fun to do. A lot of the, They had a lot of smaller blocks, so it's nice because then they go pretty quick, even though there's quite a lot of blocks in it. They go pretty quick. Okay, so this is going to be the placement line to put down our our um, mylar, which is actually like an applique. So I'm going to grab my maybe. I'm going to try to grab my uh, Kimberbell tape here because I do want to go ahead and take this down. So you can see that the edge of my rainbow is about a quarter of an inch from the edge here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to lay my mylar down over my rainbow and I'm going to get my tape because this stuff does scoot around. So I am going to tape this down. So we'll tape it down up here. Might be able to get by with just two pieces of tape. I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay because it's stiff enough. This is a little bit thicker mylar, so it doesn't move around quite so much, but it does work. It, it is kind of shiny, so it moves. Okay. So then it says the rainbow fill is going to be the next color. And we're, gonna, we're not going to take this off until the end. So all of these little fillers and everything that are going to happen next, that all the colors of the rainbow, are going to be on top of the mylar. But then we'll take the mylar off at the end. So it's going to be kind of a, a pretty kind of a, a motif style stitch that's going to cover the mylar. So you can kind of see it through it, and then it gliss glistens through the threads, and it does make it really neat. But these do take a little bit to stitch out. So I'll get this one started, and then I'll go ahead and I will turn off the camera for a moment while this is finishing up. Okay, so we're ready. <clears throat> we're done with our first section of rainbow, and this was the blue, and it did a little satin stitch on the edge too. We're just going to leave our mylar on there and we're going to go to the second color and this one's going to be oh the lime green 1072 let me get that one the lime green and it's going to do the same thing do that little oops do that kind of little motif decorative fill over the mylar and you can kind of see the little mylar just kind of peeking out so when i put when i hold it up when we're done, you'll be able to see better. So, okay. And then it's going to do a little satin stitch as well. Push this in here. All right. So this is the second color, the, the lime green. 
And then I think the next one is going to be yellow. So it's going to do that decorative fill first. And then it's going to do a little satin stitch to cover it up. Okay, so it did the green and it did like a little satin stitch to cover up the raw edge in between the colors. So now it's going to go on. The third color is going to be yellow and it's my 0104 daffodil. So it's going to do the same thing, do that cute little motif decorative stitch. And then it's going to do the satin stitch to cover up the raw edge. And then we have one more color. This is turning out really pretty. I just love, I love my wire. It's so pretty and decorative and it's shimmery. Okay, so the final color in the rainbow is going to be the red, which is my 807 Carmen. So then it's going to do the little decorative fill and it's going to do a little satin stitch to cover up all the raw edges. And then we'll remove the mylar after that is done. Hopefully my mylar doesn't want to, every now and then my mylar will try to do a little bit of a pucker, but I think it'll be okay. Looks like it's going to be okay. I probably should have put another little piece of tape up here, but I think we'll be okay. So it's off to do the red, and then we'll come back and take the mylar, remove the outside edges of the mylar. Okay, so there's our Carmen uh, red outline of our, our rainbow. Boy, that's really pretty. I like the colors. All right, so we're going to take this tape off now, if I can get a hold of it here. And I always have trouble getting it off. There we go. And then we're going to remove the mylar. So what we want to do is just be kind of careful. And this will just rip out from under the stitches. So I'm just going to kind of carefully pull up on the edges around the outside. And it just kind of slides right out. Just don't pull too hard. Work around the edges. And then it leaves that pretty little shimmer in underneath those threads. What a... I, I just, I like I said, I just love Mylar. Iridescent Mylar is my favorite because it just gives that shimmer and it makes it look so bright. All right, oops, got a little spot here. Then my come, there it comes. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? You can see the little shimmer on it. Looks so pretty. Looks like I got a little tail down here. Get the little tail trimmed off. And now we're ready to trim our rainbow block. Isn't that pretty? Look at the little shimmer underneath the, the stitches. So I'm going to set up over here for, and, and I'll be back in a moment and we'll do the trimming. Okay, so I've got my block out of the hoop here and it says in the instructions that the edge of the rainbow is supposed to be about a quarter of an inch from the cut line. So if we place that in the right spot, we should be okay. So I'm going to, whoops, lay this one down inside there and line it up and we want these edges to be about a quarter of an inch from here so that looks about right like that i'm going to go this way just a little bit that looks pretty good maybe up just a teeny bit okay and then we're going to lay the larger ruler over and this is the four and a half by four and a half because this one was four and a half by four and a half as well so then i'm going to go ahead and take my rotary cutter let me push this over just a little, and I'm going to start inside a little bit, pull back into the corner, and push forward. Oh my gosh, what a pretty block. I like this one. See, I'm seeing all these new for the first time with you, so I actually kind of like doing videos like this, because then I get to get to see everything, you know, come alive with you, because I don't, I haven't done this before. So, okay. So there is our rainbow. Isn't that pretty? And that one's going to be ready for the, for the bench pillow pretty soon. So isn't that pretty? So then the next block we're going to do is going to be actually another rainbow, but it's going to be called, it's called Rainbow Cauldron. And there's a little cauldron at the bottom. And this one also has some specialty instructions. So once I see it on the screen, I'll know better where to place the design. I think it's just going to be centered. Because by the way it's looking, um, it's just going to be centered. So we'll, we'll uh, get it up here on the screen and we'll be able to tell better. So give me a moment. I'll get everything set up for the next block and we'll do the rainbow cauldron. 
Okay, so we're ready for the rainbow cauldron, and we're just going to make one of these blocks. Um, this one has a background fabric, so this is that another one of the kind of gray ones with the little lines on it. And then um, we're going to have black glitter vinyl for the cauldron. So I'm going to take, um, remember, we always want to take that clear carrier sheet off of these um, glitters. So I'm going to try to pull that off for you. There we go. So I got my piece of black glitter vinyl here. And then we're going to have a piece of the iridescent, the iridescent mylar. So we're going to put more mylar under our rainbow. So I'm going to lay these two pieces over here out of the way for a moment. And then this one says it has specialty instructions, trimming instructions. So, but what it is, is you're using two rulers. So I think the way, if I'm reading this right, it the, the um, design's going to come in in the center. And then we're going to be cutting it short on the side. So I think it's going to be okay. So let's take a look at what we have when we get it on the screen. So I'm going to be using my 6 by 10 hoop because this block says it will measure four and a half by eight and a half so in other words finished four by eight so it's narrow and long so i'm gonna i put my six by ten hoop in my machine with my um, no shell mesh stabilizer in it i'm going to use a four by eight plaid one so let's go ahead and go over here and find our quilting design so we're going to do plaid one let's see if i can get the right the right uh, folder this time. My goodness, I, I next time I do one of these, I'll have to make sure <laughs> I don't have all of the, just put the ones in that I need. I have so many. Okay, so this needs to be four by eight. So here's four by six, four by eight. Okay, so we're gonna get the plaid four by eight and I'm gonna hit set. And then I can see here, it says um, for the cutting, that you're going to be basically cutting up you can see this that the rainbow the edge of the rainbow is going to be right along the cut line right here so i think when we bring this in centered i think it'll be okay so let's take a look we might have to move it over so let's take a look all right so i'm going to go ahead and hit add on, down here and then let's go get the rainbow cauldron let's see here and see how this comes up Look at the gnome. All right, so there's the rainbow, and where's the cauldron? Let's see, here it is. Rainbow cauldron. Okay, so if you can see on the screen, according to what it looks like for the cutting, it we're going to be trimming right along the edge of that rainbow. And to me, it looks like it is pretty close just keeping it centered but i think we might need to move it over just a little can you kind of see that we're a little away from the cutting line here so i might actually just nudge it over a little bit i'm going to hit edit move and then let's just nudge it over just a little teeny bit so that it it's very close to the edge of the rainbow is going to be very close to that outside line that's going to be where we're going to be trimming because that's going to that's basically the fabric placement line so we don't want to trim through the stitches so i'm going to back it off just a little nudge but it's going to be basically right up there on the edge and then they said you were going to and if we if we center it we probably could just leave it centered it may be okay because they didn't, it, it looks like it's just centered. I'm worried about the, the little handle over here being just a little bit, so I am going to nudge it over just a smidgen. But you don't want to trim through the end of your rainbow, and, the, and it says the rainbow is going to be, the end of the edge of the rainbow is going to be in the seam allowance. So I did move it over just, just a little. Okay, I think it'll be okay there. I haven't got it quite over to the edge but I'm a, I don't really want to cut through my um, stitches because I was afraid, I'm afraid things, if I move it all the way over, I'm afraid I'm going to cut through my stitches there. So I'm just going to leave it over one bump to the right so that, that, that it's very close. And then this will be inside. So the batting line is basically going to be our, our, the inside line here is going to be 
um, the stitching line where we're going to stitch the block together and see it's just going to put the end of it together and then this is going to be basically right up to the handle looks like to me it's going to be like basically right up to the handle okay so I think we're going to be okay I mean I think we could move it all the way over I'm worried about I don't want to lose my handle over here so let me look and see if, if I can see a picture of this in the in the pillow that shows the handle. I can't see a picture of it really. It's right in the seam line. So I think maybe I'm going to go ahead and, and move it all the way over just about to the edge so that it's going to be very close to me trimming that off because I don't want to lose my handle on this side when I put it in um, the seam. Okay, so I think I think that'll be okay. Kind of, it, you know, in the center it was here. So see, it was just a, a little teeny bit from the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump it over to almost that other side. And then I know I'm going to have, because see, you can see where the, the batting line is here. It comes right down on the edge of the handle. So I think that should be okay. Because I don't want to lose my handle in the seam. Okay. I think we're good. This way we're okay. Up and down is okay. It was just this way. I wasn't sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit embroidery. And the first thing we'll do, of course, is our quilting. And I've got my white thread back in my bobbin, or in my needle and my bobbin, my bob, bobbin thread and my bobbin. And I'm going to quilt it in the white. And I chose the plaid. Got to get my batting here in a second. I've got, I think I've got a chunk here that'll be about the right size. So we'll see. Okay, so first step of the quilting is going to be the placement line for the batting. I think this is going to be a really neat one. So when I first read the instructions, I thought that the rainbow we just did and this went together, but they're actually separate blocks. Because I thought they were, some of the, I know the other Lucky Us pillow, which is the square um, St. Patty's Day pillow, that one, um, that one actually was uh, the there was two blocks one had the cauldron and one had the rainbow on it so I was thinking that this one was gonna be like that too but it's not it's because I'm trying to get my little chunk of batting trimmed off here so I can use it it's be easier to handle I think in a smaller piece there we go okay so this is kind of a long narrow block so we're going to put our batting down and tack our batting down and then we'll trim it to put our fabric on. So we're moving right along. This, these, these are pretty quick blocks. This one's a little longer. It says 22 minutes. It has a little bit of um, satin stitching and the rainbow takes a little bit. So there's satin stitching around the... Um, around the cauldron at the bottom. I think you put buttons on top of the cauldron to look like coins, because I noticed there was a bunch of little yellow buttons in the, um, whoops, there go my scissors again. Um, I noticed there was a bunch of little yellow buttons in the package. I bet that's going to be our money in the cauldron. Okay, so we're going to trim our batty. Get this trimmed. Maybe if I can, I'm going to get my scissors ordered this weekend. My goodness, they're getting bad. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to do step number three, which is going to be the placement line for the fabric. It's kind of nice that they have all different hoop sizes. So we've been able to do some smaller hoops. And this, this one's a little bit bigger, but not a real big hoop. Had to use the 12 by the 12, the 8 by 12 for the first couple because they were pretty good sized blocks. I didn't realize there was any blocks that big. So I've got my shape flex also on the back of this fabric. Okay, so there's my shape flex on the back. Make sure I don't have any strings in there. And then I'm going to center this over my batting there. 
get it as centered as I can, and then we're going to tack it down. So step number four, we'll tack it down. I'm looking at my little color chart here. We're going to start with the misty blue, it looks like, again, maybe. Cauldron placement link. Oh, no, we're going to start with the cauldron. So we're going to start with black when we get to our cauldron block. And then we're going to go to the misty blue. Trying to look at the colors quickly as I'm going here. All right. So now, of course, step number five is the quilting. So we're going to do the plaid quilting on here. This is pretty fabric. I like this fabric. They use this in quite a bit of things. I think it originally came out with the, what's the one, the home quilt? It was, it was the little house quilt. And uh, I haven't done that one yet. I really want to do that one. I've got several kits here that I need to um, make up. And most of my kits that are left are um, either bench pillows or quilts. So we may be doing some quilts like this too. So I'd like to do a couple more of the quilts. I've got the spring quilt, and I've got, um, oh, the patriotic quilt. I'm going to do that one. Red, white, and bloom. I'm going to do that one. So we'll do some quilts probably, too, this way. All right, so we're getting our plaid on here, and then we're going to move on to the placement line for the cauldron. So I'm going to get my, that'll be with the black glitter vinyl here. I'll get that ready. Oops. My mylar is stuck to something. I'll lose that. These these quilting designs are so much fun, and they turn out so pretty. And it makes doing these pillows so much faster because I was when I was started doing these bench pillows, I always did. The quilting in Design Center, usually in my Luminaire, which is also a lovely way to do it. It works just fine that way. It does take a little longer, I think, but because th this is really fun to do, and it just you can just sew them together at the end. So I've really enjoyed them since these have come out. I've done several of the bench pillows the old way that I did them, you know, with my Design Center, but because um, I'm not a free motion quilter, I'm not very good at that, and so this quilting is way easier for me. <laughs> So that I have uh, my embroidery machine quilting for me. I really like that plaid design. Is that pretty? I use Hobbs 8020 batting. I think I said that in the last video. I really like it because to me it just has a little bit more loft, and you can see the quilting more. With the real flat quilting uh, batting, it's so flat that you don't see the the definition of the quilting. All right. So now I'm going to switch over to black, and we're going to do the placement line for the cauldron. Then, of course, we need to press that. So that's going to be um, glitter vinyl. Just so I kind of find my black. Here's my black. Put that in there. We'll do the placement line, and then we'll tack that down. And I think that's going to have a satin stitch on it, it looks like. Yep. So we're going to have to do a little bit of pressing over here. I'm going to move my book back. So there's our cauldron, and then we're going to take the black glitter vinyl and lay it over that. And then the next step, in with, I'm just going to leave my black thread into, is going to tack this down. And I'm just going to hold this. Sometimes I tape the glitter vinyl just because it does kind of scoot a little bit. It's a little shiny in the back. But most of the time I can hold it well enough. There we go. So it's going to do the tack down. And then we're going to trim it. I'll find my glasses for this. When I do these black ones, I always have to, these, this trimming on the black, I always have to have my glasses on. All right. So we're going to trim this. Close to the stitches. Whoops. Looks like I've got batting in my scissors. I think this is why my scissors are dull because I'm always trimming all this gla this uh, glitter vinyl. <laughs> I go through a lot of these scissors because I trim a lot. So 
they stay sharp for a long time but the, these these i trim a lot of this vinyl and this doesn't help any with the scissors i'm sure but i don't know how else to trim them i, I could just have a spare a, a pair of scissors just for the vinyls that might be a solution so that the other ones would last longer but then of course i'd have to find two pairs of scissors so that could be a problem all right trim around this so i got a long little tail here get rid of that okay so now we're going to go over here to the ironing pad and i'm just going to tip the camera up so you can see what i'm doing i'm going to go over here to my ironing pad next to me whoops i want to burn my hoop there i'm just going to tip this up so you can see what i'm doing i'm going to take my pressing cloth and it's just a old tea towel i use for pressing okay i'm going to set that over my cauldron and i'm just going to take my little there's my little mini iron it's all hot and i'm just going to press down for about 15 20 seconds i'll have to probably do two presses on this one because it's a little wider than my iron but I love this iron because I can get it into all the sizes of hoops because it's small enough. Some of the travel irons work too, but this one is much smaller and it will fit even in the four by four hoop. Okay. So I got that done. Let it cool just a moment. And then we're going to satin stitch on the edge and we're going to leave the black thread in there let's put pretty this down I'm sure it cools off a little bit i don't like to sew on it until it's a little cooler okay and then the next step is going to be the satin stitch outline and this is going to take a few minutes so i'll go ahead and turn off the camera for a few minutes while this is stitching and we'll come back and then the next steps are going to be the rainbow Okay, so we got our, our satin stitch done on our cauldron here. And the next step is going to be the placement line for the mylar. So I put in my misty blue, which is number 0287 for that. So I'm going to stitch out my placement line. i going to find my piece of mylar. It decided it was going to escape here. So we're going to put that on. And I can see that my rainbow is going to be just barely at the edge of that line. So I think we'll be okay where we put it. We've moved it over just a smidgen. Because I think when I do my seam allowance, it's just going to come right up to the to the uh, little handle on the cauldron here. I notice i got a tail again. All right, so then we're going to lay our piece of mylar down. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this down again. Because this stuff likes to move around. So I usually try to tape this down. Put this tape down. Okay. I might put a piece of tape on the side over here. I noticed my other one was trying to um, wrinkle a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and tape the other sides too. Just because it does scoot quite a bit. All right. And then the first... Um, row of the rainbow is going to be the blue so we're going to leave the misty blue in and it's going to start just like we did the last one it's going to do a little decorative fill and then a satin stitch to cover the edge and then we'll move on to the next color of the rainbow okay the second color of the rainbow is going to be the 1072 lime green it's going to do another one of those little fills over the mylar I think I'm going to really like this. This is going to be so pretty. And off it goes to do the decorative stitch and then it'll do the little satin stitch to cover up the raw edges. Okay, so the next uh, color on our rainbow is going to be the daffodil, which is 0104. So off to the yellow part of our rainbow. Well, maybe if my machine decides to sew. <laughs> Every now and then you get one of those little tails there and they don't like it. They get mad. All right, so off it goes and it's going to do the yellow and then the last color on the outside of the rainbow will be the red. Okay, so the final color on my rainbow is going to be my 807 Carmen and then we're going to remove 
the um, mylar like we did on the last one. I really like that decorative stick. It's really pretty. Just enough to see the mylar through there. Okay, so we finished up the rainbow and I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Kimberbell tape off, paper tape off of the mylar here so we can hopefully I'll get it off here. There we go. And then we can take off the mylar and this is this block will be done and then I'll set up and we'll trim this one. This, this one's going to be a little different for trimming because it is going to be trimmed. Um, it's going to be trimmed with using two rulers. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and carefully pull the mylar. Just don't pull too hard. It should come off fairly easily. With all the needle penetrations, it usually comes off pretty easily. All the way around. Like that. All right. Oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? I love that. A little black fuzz up here. All right, so give me a moment. I'm going to set up and we will do the... Uh, We'll do the trimming over here. So, got to get my got to get my my cutting table all set up over here. Okay, so we're going to trim this block, and this block's going to be a little different in that we're going to be using two rulers. Um, it's four and a half inches wide, but it's eight and a half inches long. So the one ruler is four and a half by six and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to center it. This I have to find out where my top stitching is and I'm going to try to keep from cutting through those um, stitches over here on the rainbow okay so I'm just going to kind of center this up with my so that you can kind of see my my stitch lines right here and up here so that's where the outside of the ruler is going to be and then the inside is going to be lined up in here so we're going to be cutting on the inside of this one on the sides here but then we're going to use a different ruler for the ends so I'm just kind of Trying to get it all centered. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take the six and a half by eight and a half, or the uh, so, sorry, yeah, eight and a half, six and a half by eight and a half ruler, and lay it down on the outside. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to trim along in here, but then we're not going to trim the ends. We're just going to trim the sides because it needs to be four and a half inches wide. So I'm going to tip this this way. Make sure that I'm not going to cut through those rainbow ends. I think we'll be good here. Just a little crooked this way. Okay. So I'm going to trim along here and just trim the long side. So I'm going to flip it all the way around and trim this side. Okay. I'm going to trim just the outside of those rainbow ends. Okay. Then I'm going to take the inside ruler out. If I can get a hold of it, there we go. And then we're going to cut along the ends of this. So this is going to be, we're going to cut along the ends of it here, okay? And then we're going to connect the lines. So this is going to be eight and a half inches long. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to just do these little ends that we missed. So these little edges here, I just get them lined up with the edge of my ruler here. And then trim that. Let's see if I can get this one. I always have trouble with this. I always have trouble getting on the right spot, but I think I did okay with that one. Okay. Turn it over. Get these out of the way. Turn it over and do these and then we have our four and a half by eight and a half block so that the, that one we didn't have to do too much changing of the design we did move it over just a little bit from center to get it a little closer to the to the left edge okay all right so there is our did i get it all cut i think so there we go Try not to cut myself with my rotary cutter. All right. So there is our rainbow cauldron. Isn't that pretty? And then there's going to be like little buttons in here that are going to look like the coins in the cauldron. So very cute block. I really like that one. So that one is going to be, it's four and a half by eight and a half. 
Okay, so I'll set up for the last series of blocks. It's actually five little blocks, and they're going to be done in a 4x4 four four hoop. And it's going to be the lucky, the letter box, or call, and, it, and it spells out lucky. So we're going to do all five. I'm just going to do one on the camera, um, one on the video, because they're all the same, and you just change the letters, okay? And then this one has some specialty um, cutting. The We won't have to move the design at all, but the cutting on this one is actually a placement line so that you'll just trim um, by the lines on the um, in the design. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. I think this one I'm going to use a 4x4 hoop. No, I'm going to have to use my 5x7. Let's see. Square the finished block to 2.5 by 2.5. I think we can use our 4x4 hoop for this because we're going to be using a 2x2 two two quilting design. So we can use the 4x4 four four hoop for this one. So I'll get all set up and we'll start working on the word lucky. Okay, so we're ready for the last little series of blocks for this um, video. And this is going to be a series of five little blocks that spell out the word lucky. They're all small. Um, so I put my 4x4 four four hoop in with my no-shell mesh in the hoop. And I'm going to choose um, a, let's see, the, these are going to square up to 2.5 by 2.5. So we're going to go ahead and choose a 2x2 two two design then because that will be the finished size. So I'm going to go get my little plaid um, quilting design again. Let's see here. Got to get all the way down to the peas. Where is it? Oh, just about got it. Okay, plaid one. And then we're going to do two by two. So this is going to be a small block. Here's the two by two. That's usually the smallest one they have. I'm going to set that. And then I'm going to bring in the first letter. So we're going to be making one of each letter. There's five little blocks that spell out the word lucky. So I'm going to do the L first. So I'm going to hit add. Then I'll show you the little, the little quick, um, the quick way to get into the next one um, when I get done with L. So we're, then we're going to go ahead and hit, go back to my stick. And we're going to get the letter L. Let's see here. Here's our letters here. So we got all, all, the, all the letters at the top. So we're going to hit the letter L for lucky. And I'm going to hit set. And then these are going to be centered. It does say that there's specialty um, cutting instructions. But those are for the trimming instructions are for the fact that there is going to be a trimming line around the outside edge. So that there's not, there's not a ruler small enough for these. So there'll be um, a trimming line. But we, we know that already, be, and we're okay with the 2x2 two two design, so we'll be good with that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll see if there's anything else. I've got my no-show mesh in my hoop. I've got my batting ready. And I think I'm going to do my, these fabrics are all, second here, i got to get my little backgrounds. So the little backgrounds here kind of shows you, I'm going to hit embroidery over here. So we're ready to go. Okay. So over here, it kind of shows you that they kind of alternated the colors. So I'm going to do the L with this lighter green. So we'll do the L and then the U will be in the dark one. And then the C is going to be in the light one. So I'm just going to kind of put them in order here so I don't get them mixed up. Okay. And then the K is going to be in the darker one and the Y is going to be in the lighter one like that. So they're going to be just alternated. Okay. So I've got, I'll put those in my order. I also have my no show or my uh, shape flex on the back of my fabric. And I think we're ready to go. So the light colored green, we're going to make the L with the light colored green. First step is going to be, and I, and I have a, only have a 4x4 four four hoop this time. So we got to go down to even a smaller hoop for this one. And we're going to do the placement line for our batting. Now I've got some littler scraps here that I thought would work good for these little blocks. If I can reach them, here we go. Had a couple of little scraps left, so I thought, well, we'll just use some of these little ones up for these little blocks. Okay, I'm gonna put my batting down, and then the second step is going to be tacking it down. And I couldn't decide. I thought about maybe quilting these in green, but you know, the greens that I have in my design are 
different greens and I thought, you know what, we're just going to stick with the white. I've already gone, done some of the other greens in white, so I'm just going to do my quilting in white. So that's what's in my needle. Okay, and then we're going to trim the batting. So these just little, little letters are going to be going to be um, centered in those little blocks. So that's going to be the finished size of the block. It's two inches by two inches. Okay, I got to get rid of some of these little pieces in my hand. Okay, and then the third step is going to be our placement line for our fabric. And I'm going to get my, the first, the L is going to be on the lighter green fabric. With my shape flex on the back. And I'm going to lay this over my batting, get it as centered as possible. We've got plenty of fabric around it. And then I'm going to tack it down. And this is also going to be the line that we will trim it on. It probably does that line again. I think it does that line again um, when it, it's in the design as well. So it'll sew over this line again. Step number five is going to be our little bit of quilting we're going to do on here. So it's just going to be a little bit of quilting. And then I've been trying to decide what color I want my letters. So I think I've decided I was going to do white, but since I quilted it in white, I was afraid maybe the letter wouldn't show up that well. So I decided to do the gold. I think I'm going to do this gold. I like it, not the yellow, but the gold. And it's the Golden Basket 1300. I think that's what I'm going to do my letters in. They're going to still show up really well, but they're not going to be... I, I was afraid the white wouldn't show up too well with the white quilting. So I think we're going to do the gold. So let's try this and see what it looks like. We can always start again if we need to. I have done that. So we're at the point that we're going to do the... Uh, we're ready to put in the gold. So the next piece, the next step is actually the, the trimming line. And let's see, it says the place, the background. So we already did that. And then the background tack down line, trimming line. So I'm actually going to skip a step. So we're actually in the three steps of the block. The first one is the background placement line, which we've already placed the background. So I really don't need to stitch that one again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my negative positive needle down here and go down to the, to the second step of the actual design, which is going to be the, um, the background tack down trimming line. I know it's going to sew right over the white that's already on there, but I'm just going to let it sew because I think I should just to verify it's going to be the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and go put in my yellow at this point, my golden basket, my gold, and let, let it sew over the white with the gold. And it looks like it's going to sew right over this outside edge, which we already have. And I probably could have skipped it as well, but I just wanted to verify that everything was the right size. And it is. And then the last step is going to be the letter in the center. And it's going to be kind of a little motif style um, fill. It's going to be a fill. And it's going to have the letter L. So hopefully the gold will show up okay. We could do it in the white, but I think the gold will be okay. Let's just see what it looks like. It was hard to tell. Um, the In the picture, it looks kind of like they used a green. But none of my greens look really good. This this is a little bit more olive than the other greens I have. And I think the gold's going to be fine. Because it's, it's dense enough. The little decorative stitch is dense enough that it looks like it's going to be fine. So I went with the gold instead of the green, and I, I, I really intended to do white, but um, I just wasn't sure that it would show up with the white. Sorry, I'm, I'm having help again, so you'll have to excuse my, my Gigi cat. She decided to come visit. She likes to watch the machine run. I've been kind of ignoring her since I came home because I've been sitting here working on the video. So I think that's going to show up okay. I think it's going to do a little satin stitch maybe outline. If I can see in the picture, it's a little hard on the screen to tell. I think it's going to do at least something around the outside edge. 
Oh yeah, it's going to do a little satin stitch. So I think that'll be fine. I like, think I'm going to like the gold. The other uh, fabric is a little darker. So I think the gold will even show up more on it. So I think it'll be fine. That's why when I don't do these, it's a surprise to me too. I never know what I, if I'm going to like it or not. And I figure we'll just do it together and see what happens. So I think that's cute. I'm just going to leave, like I said, I'm just going to leave all the, the, the uh, quilting white because sometimes it's hard for me to decide and, and white's always a, a safe bet <laughs> with quilting, especially most of their back, the backings were very light colored. So, okay, so there's the little L. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with the, the four other letters. I'm going to do U, C, K, Y for lucky and then um, remember to alternate your your fabrics so I won't do all of these on on screen but I am going to show you my little trick to get the design set up but so the next one's going to be on the darker green and then the light and then the dark and then the light okay so they're all done the same way so let me show you my little trick here when you get ready to do the next letter instead of having to take everything off the screen I'm just going to hit OK here because I had that open I'm just going to select, I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to just select the letter. Okay, that's what's selected right now, and I'm going to delete the letter. But see, I can leave my quilting up there, because the quilting is the same one that we need for the next letter. So then I can just hit add down here, and then I can go back to my stick, and I can just get the second letter, which is going to be U. So I'm going to go find my second letter. And there's the U. So we're going to get the U, okay, and set that one. And then we already had the embroidery set up here, or the uh, quilting, I should say, and now we're ready to go again with the next one with the letter U. But don't forget to change your letters when you're doing these. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out of the hoop, my L. I think I'm going to like the yellow. They, it's very subtle in the picture on the on the on the um, like on the pillow. It looks very subtle, so I think that I think that'll be fine with the gold. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my second block in here, and I'm going to stitch out my other four blocks with the U C K Y, and then we will come back together to do the trimming on these, so you can see how to trim them. Thought I'd come on and do that little trick, show you my little trick again for for uh, getting rid of the, I, I've just got, the, I've done L-U-C and now I'm ready for the K. So I'm going to return, hit the return button. And then right now the C is um, selected. So I'm going to, I want to just delete the C and not the, the uh, quilting design. So I'm just going to hit the delete. Okay. And now I just have my quilting design still there. So then I can hit add down here and go back to my stick and get my letter K. So I'm moving along. I have two more letters to do. So then we will we will get together and we'll do the trimming for them. So here's my K and the K is the darker color. Yep, darker color. So I got my K. I'm going to set that and I'm ready to embroider my fourth letter. Okay, so I got all my little letter blocks done, and I did go ahead and trim a couple of them um, already. So I have my uh, CKY, my last three blocks, already trimmed. So we're going to go ahead and trim the first two. And these are real easy to trim. So there's the, the outline right here. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. The outline right here that I did with the gold, just to verify that the white and the gold was in the same place. I'm going to go ahead and take just a standard ruler, and this works better for me with a standard ruler. Second here, i got to move this up just a little bit, and I'm going to move this over so that my ruler fits better. Um, I like to take my ruler and find the two and a half inch marks on my ruler, and then bring up the corner of my ruler to the corner of, of the outline, just so that I can verify. And I'm verifying that it's on two and a half here, and it's on two and a half here the other line on the opposite side okay so that i know i've got the measurement correct and i'm just going to cut right along the um, stitching line i'll turn it again do the same thing 
verifying with my ruler that I'm on the two and a half inch marks. And that looks pretty good. I have a little trouble with it. There we go. Okay. So I just want to make sure that I have them trimmed accurately. And then, but this one is nice because it gives you a line to trim on. And then it also gives me, you know, I can use my ruler to help me out that I'm getting it accurate. So, all right. So then this one and this one are already lined up. So I'm just going to trim those two. And there's my little two and a half. So I put this over here. You can see it's two and a half by two and a half. Okay. My little ruler or my little blocks. That's L. So let's do the U here. Get these off of here and get them out of our way. And I'll do this one too. So again, I'm going to use my ruler and the markings of my ruler to help me get them lined up with those lines. And I'm moving, I'm, I'm lining up the two and a half inch mark on the line down here and over here just to make sure that I've got them placed accurately. And then I think I might actually be able to get this one too. There we go. Sometimes I have to be very careful when I cut across because I can cut myself. <laughs> I'm not very good, so I'm going to flip this one over and see if I can do the same thing. Line up those lines on my ruler and the lines here. One and two. Okay, so you can do all the, get all your little blocks trimmed that will spell out the word lucky. And I think they're done like uh, on top of each other. So I think they, in the pillow, I think they're actually done like this. So we're gonna, they're gonna lay L, U, C, K, and Y like this. I think they're done this way in the, in the pillow. So, so there's my little, my little blocks with lucky. I did my gold thread and my white background so we got those all done and then the other blocks of course we did in this video is here's our oops got some white thread on my glitter vinyl there there's our cauldron with the rainbow and the rainbow and then here's the two shamrocks so look at all the blocks we got done so there's five six seven eight nine blocks in this video so the next video will be um, the three gnome blocks. So there's only three that have the gnomes, but they have a little bit more involved with them. So I thought I would do the three gnome blocks together. And we're going to make some little legs and some little feet, some different things. So I think it'll be real fun. So thank you for joining me for Luck of the Gnome Part 2. And then Part 3 will be the three little gnome blocks. Thanks, everybody.